Hey guys, I'm Mark, and today I wanted to take you up to the greenhouse all the way up at the top of the hill of our farm to show you some of the hanging basket combinations that we create. Uh, behind me here is just over a thousand hanging baskets in this greenhouse right now, uh, 39 different varieties, or 39 different combinations, excuse me, that, uh, that a lot of which I came up with over the fall. And I just wanted to put together this video to show you a lot of these different combinations that not necessarily just would have to go in a hanging basket, but you could also put these in a planter or in the ground or in a window box, and they'd look really good there too. Uh, we have a lot of customers that come in, we notice that are, can be very apprehensive about different colors and textures and things and what to put in a mixed combination. So a lot of the purpose of this video is just kind of show you some of the combinations that I've come up with and uh, maybe see if you like them. It might give you some ideas to use at home. And if anything else, just to kind of wear away at that, that apprehension that some of you might have about putting uh, some crazy colors together that you wouldn't think would work, but actually wind up working. Um, so I guess I'll start with uh, where we are. This greenhouse, like I mentioned, is on the very top of the property, and we call this our cool house. Uh, it's, you probably have seen, if you've seen some of my other videos from me working in the garden, it's the greenhouse that's behind me, all the way up on top of the hill above the blueberry patch. And we call it our cool house because it's just that. It's cool compared to our other greenhouses. We're up on a hill, we got a lot of airflow, a lot of wind moves through. Uh, this particular greenhouse itself, the roofs open up, gets a lot more airflow through it. The sides roll up as well. So it's a really nice place to, uh, to, store, to store a lot of our annuals going into the summertime. Just keeps them that much more cool. Um, we, we don't like to put them directly outside outside because we get a lot of torrential thunderstorms that can come in and can damage a lot of things. So this is sort of like our, our happy medium of keeping everything protected, but still as cool as possible. Uh, it also serves great to finish off what we call finishing off cooler weather annuals, uh, which is the case with these baskets here. These baskets were not planted up here. They're actually planted in a much warmer greenhouse down below closer to where the retail is. And what we do is we plant them close together on, be on benches and they're heated and it's a much warmer house, like I say, and it gets them growing pretty quickly. And then when it's time for them to get spaced, we'll bring them up here and we'll set them up on buckets like this with, uh, with a little bit more space in between them to uh, what we call finish. And when they finish in a cooler house, basically what starts to happen is the leaves swell up, they get a little bit thicker, they get greener, the basket itself will tighten up, it won't get all kind of leggy, sort of, which would be the case if it was still in a lot of heat. Uh, so it's just a really nice place to, uh, to finish out the hanging baskets. Uh, I guess I'll go through and talk about each one, specifically this one here I'm standing next to, it's a good place to start. This is just purples, pinks, not too, not too crazy in terms of the color scheme, but, uh, but there's different plants in here that we chose that would work well with one another. Uh, this is a Ray Purple Vein Petunia. It's, it's one I really like a lot. It just does so well. Stays sort of compact as far as petunias go, so it won't go taking over the whole pot. This is a Bebop Pink Verbena, and it accents really well with some of these double light pink calabricoas and so on and so forth. But that's a... Uh, that's not a really crazy combination, but it's something that uh, I think has a lot of things in it that work well together. Uh, behind me here is something I think on the little, a uh, little more of the warmer side of the color wheel. This is uh, just a lot of oranges and reds and whites. And you can see that they're still, these baskets as a whole are still pretty small, but I thought that it would make a good video right now because uh, they're, they're just approaching what we would call being saleable. Uh, they're just big enough that we can start putting them down in the retail. And when that happens, we're going to start pulling big chunks of these baskets out of uh, up here. <laughs> so when it comes to making a video, you know, I think it looks a lot better to have the whole greenhouse full of baskets than what it's going to look like in about a week or so when we start pulling big chunks out of here. But this gives you a good idea of what it's going to turn out looking like. I'm, this was... Um, I, would, I did want to mention this down here. This is a sun impatient tucked way down in here. This one's smaller than, than some of the others. But uh, we got this idea off of a mix masters combination from balls called Peach of My Heart. We got the idea to put a sun impatient in with our uh, sun combination baskets. And because we grew that combination last year and it did really well. 
when I say a mix masters combination, that's like a, that's like a from the breeder. It's a turnkey combination that they tell you all the things that are in it. They show you a finished product and they just say, here, you know, you need this, 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 and this boom, there you are. There's your combination. But we like to make a lot of our own because, uh, well, I think foremost, we just like to make things more difficult for ourselves sometimes. And, uh, secondly, no, it's, uh, it's, um, it's fun to be creative and come up with your own stuff. I think that's one of the more uh, entertaining aspects of this job. So anyway, let's go through. I'll talk about some other ones. Now, here's more an example of something that is kind of a crazy color scheme with things that I wouldn't think would work well together until you see them together. This is just oranges and purples. And we got a, a volvulus, a blue volvulus in there just to just to throw things off even that much more. But uh, this is a galaxy red geranium, which is a little bit more orange to me. Well, at least it's orange enough that it goes really well with the uh, mini famous Neo Deep Orange Calibrecoa there. And then you can see this is the new Midnight Gold, well, it's new for us, Midnight Gold Petunia, uh, which goes really well with, this is a Lascar Dark Velvet Verbena. So it's just something kind of crazy. But uh, I guess we can walk. Why don't we walk this way? Here's another cool combination. It's an Amor Queen of Hearts Petunia. There's a Super Bells Calibrecoa in there. Let's see. This is fun. If you like, uh, if you like cherry and blue, this is actually a cherry super cal. It's a, it's a pet koa. It's like a cross between a caliber koa and a petunia is what this, um, this cherry one is. That's a cicada product. And then, uh, it goes really nicely with blue. You can see, so this is a Serfinia heavenly blue. This is a really nice choice for a good, like denim, light blue colored petunia. Try to land them try to land them right or else when Holly's up here and she's breezing through playing her favorite game and knock the pots over it just makes it that much easier for her <clears throat> she's sleeping right now she's taking her nap before class tonight we've got a uh, obedience class and I like to give her a good nap before taking her in there um, here's another example of there's a compact lavender sun impatient in there and that'll get big. I mean, it's trying, it's sort of playing catch up right now. Uh, it's not as uh, fast out of the gates as something like a geranium would be in this case, but uh, this is going to wind up being like the tortoise that wins a race. And when we get into the warmer weather later in the summer, you're going to see this sun impatient really start to take over a large portion of this basket. So I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, moving forward. Another reason why we like to <clears throat> Why we like to make a lot of the combinations ourselves is because we can pick out colors that we feel match each other pretty well. This is a, um, it's a cabaret neon pink Calibrecoa that, that hits that geranium pretty spot on. That's a Calliope magenta. If it's not spot on enough, it's pretty close. But I, I like that particular matchup. You can see there's a uh, light pink with eye Calibrecoa back here. That kind of takes up the eye of that sort of takes up the um, the uh, the neon rose color. But it's fun. I mean, we play around with colors, and you just kind of. I mean, you got something like this, which is fun. It's just red and white, but I mean, it's all just red and white. So it, to me, I mean, to each his own. But to me, it doesn't really pop out as vibrantly as something that's got a whole bunch of crazy different stuff going in it. Here's a. Uh, Here's one I really like. This is actually supposed to be um, more of more of a uh, of a bicolor like this bloom, but there's a little bit of a, of a reversion going on here. This is a crazy tunia, frisky purple, and again we put a double calibrecoa in there just to try to match it. And um, even yet again, you can see over here we started using terina, and I think that's something that we're going to start doing a lot more. With these hanging baskets it seems to do really well uh, this is um tarina summer bouquet wave summer wave bouquet gold that's the name of that one and uh, it's a really nice 
Tarina. And again, there's that midnight gold petunia in there that we love so much. Purple and yellow, always a favorite. Let's see what else. We'll just move right on down the line. These are neat. That's a salmon. This is like a salmon light blue, I guess, was sort of the approach with this one. That's a calliope large salmon geranium. And then there it is again, the Surfinia heavenly blue uh, uh, petunia. And then this, this other one, this other salmon colored petunia, this is, um, well, the other salmon color in this pot, I should say. This is called Patunia coral, sunspun coral. And then that also picks up uh, Diva Atomic Orange. That's the name of this one. It used to be, uh, no, Chameleon Atomic Orange. I'm sorry. It used to be Chameleon Sunshine Berry, but then they changed the name or they came up with an improved version, and that's what this is. Sometimes it can be tough remembering all the names because uh, the breeders do like to come out with improved versions of things all the time. And when they do, they change the name on you. So uh, when we're going through my spreadsheets and planning all this stuff out, I always have to make the new substitution and make sure to check through the catalog and uh, make sure I'm not um, asking for something that's extinct. But our sales rep is actually really good about, about knowing what's going on and what got replaced with what. Anyway. Some of you will understand what I'm talking about. Some of you, I'm sure that just sounds like gibberish. I just love that one so much. I know I already talked about that, but that's just a really good example. Okay, case in point, what I was just talking about was um, there was one petunia in this pot. I can't remember what it was, it was a, but it was a light blue, like a sky blue color petunia. And it wasn't available anymore. It wasn't on the market anymore. So our sales rep told us, hey, we got this one called uh, Crystal Sky that's out. Why don't you try that one? It looks pretty cool. And now, I mean, I think that looks awesome. It goes, um, oh gosh, Pink Ice. This is another super cow. It's a Petunia Caliber Coa Cross. It's called uh, Super Cow Pink Ice. And it just goes really well with that. Crystal sky. All right. Let's see. This one's fun. You can tell I like a lot of the same varieties. I just keep throwing them into different combinations with one another. So there's the midnight gold that I keep talking about um, alongside the ray purple vein again. But uh, this one's got, oh gosh, what, the one, what is this one called? It's called uh, Color Blitz Blurific. That's the name of that petunia. And sometimes you can get a, a, a really different combination just by changing up one thing in it. Uh, it kind of gets it kind of gets like a totally different feel to it. Let's see. This one's sort of reminiscent of what's going on over there. It's a little bit different. I don't think this one had a white caliber koa in it. But again, that's another example of something that we just changed a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Here's one that's really popular. Now, that's a good example of something that's got a whole bunch of different colors in it again. I mean, orange, purple. This is a, this is a really nice caliber koa. That's blues, lavender with eye. Goes really well with an amethyst double caliber koa. There's a bunch of stuff in here. It just hasn't really all come out yet. It hasn't finished and gotten really big and into its full, full glory yet. And when it does, I think they're gonna be incredible. Down here is for people that really like blue. I'm one of them. Let's see. If I take a couple different pots, I can show you what all is in this combination because uh, they're not all, not all the plants are showing through right now. But uh, there's a easy breezy pink lobularia. That one's got the night sky petunia in there. So that's the, that's the sister to the crystal sky that I showed you in the combination on the end. This is like, the original one or one of the first ones when they came out with the speckle like this it came out in dark purple like this and now there's like all kinds of different colors that they're coming out with these speckles here's one so that's like a that's like a burgundy one that this one accidentally made it into this pot but that's a uh, that's an example of uh the burgundy sky i don't know if that's exactly what that one's called but 
It's a burgundy speckled colored petunia. One of the many colors that they're coming up with now. One of the things we'll do up here this time of year, it's really important, it's a really, really important stage of all this, is we'll take notes on all these baskets and we'll figure out what is in here that we like, what in, what's in here that we don't like, and what's in here that we wanna change. Um, and this, this is an example of, this is a Cascadius rim magenta petunia, which is an excellent petunia, but it's a little more aggressive than some of the other things that we put in this pot alongside of it. So I wound up taking over for the most part. I mean, we knew it was aggressive and we tried to combat it with some other stronger things. Like you can see there's a Endurascape blue verbena in here. That's a, that's a powerhouse of a verbena. I mean, that's just a really aggressive one, but it just really wasn't quite enough, I guess, to compete with that, uh, with that rim magenta. So I think next year, if we look back at the notes, there might even be like two plugs of petunia in here that we might knock back to one for next year, or we might just put in uh, some other aggressive petunias or something with it. Cause it's a, it's a really nice flower, but we just didn't mix that particular one up right. Um, <clears throat> this one, I'm not sure what happened here. That one, not all the colors are coming out on that. Maybe it's just a little younger, got planted a little later. So we can turn around, we can go back down this way. Uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on that one. Cause this is a, this is a really nice calabacoa in here that I'm probably going to cite in a few other examples. That's a, uh, that's a mini famous yellow with red vein calabacoa and the blossom on it is just huge. And it's right alongside of uh, another mini famous calabacoa. This is uh, white with yellow eye. Some of the names are really, <laughs> some of their names are really out there and outlandish. And uh, some of the other names are pretty, uh, pretty straight to the chase. This being one of them. But here's, here's one. Here's a good example of what it's supposed to look like once everything starts to bloom in there. So you can see that, well, I'll take a blossom off this pot to show you. That's a Queen of Hearts Petunia. And then this is a Aztec Wink Burgundy Verbena. And you can see they play, they play really nice together with yellows and stuff. Just things that you wouldn't think would work well. I mean, but they come out looking all right, I think. Here we go. Red, white, and yellow. That's always been a popular one. This is our number one selling geranium by far is the geranium that's in here. Some of them need to be deadheaded. Uh, they're kind of looking a little rough right now, but this is the Calliope dark red geranium. And this, this, we outsell this particular geranium variety outsells all our other geranium varieties by, by a lot. Um, it's just a really good, aggressive, dark blood red geranium. Calliope dark red, excellent plant. <laughs> Here's another Calliope geranium that I personally like a little bit better than the blood red. I don't know, I'm not really like a, like a red guy. I, I like some of the more cooler tones, but uh, this is a Calliope large lavender. And that's kind of a wicked looking pot. This is a Tradescantia coming out the side. These break off really easily. So if you ever grow Tradescantia, just put them in an area that um, doesn't see a whole lot of foot traffic. As you can see, there's a couple pieces off on the ground here just from moving them around. They just snap and fall off. So if you're gonna use that particular plant, put it somewhere where the dogs and the kids aren't gonna to get to it. Here's another one of those um, Calliope magenta geraniums. Playing with the uh, with the um, neon rose, the cabaret neon rose calabacoa again. You'll notice a lot of these flowers are the same. Like I, I've got some ones that I really favor a lot and I just kind of mix them in in different situations, combine them with a few different things and it does create, I think, a, uh, a much different look. Like I say, they're just starting to open up now and I'm really seeing a lot of these for the first time. A lot of these combinations are new for this year uh, and I worked them out over the fall uh, and late summer up here in the trowel area that's also up on the hill. Pretty much everything we grow, at least flower wise, we try to grow out into a larger form, into a bigger pot. That way we can take 
um, take notes on it. We can match blooms, match colors, things like that. It's really helpful when you're sitting down to put together things like this. It's one thing if you're planning out, you know, a few baskets, but when you're trying to come up with, uh, you know, numbers like hey, I'm going to do a batch of 50 of this or a batch of 75 of that, then uh, the risk is a little bit, I don't know, you just want to make sure you do your homework, I guess, before pulling the trigger on something that large. All right, we covered that one. I guess we can wrap around. Might as well just show you the Calabricoa that's up here. Because I, I think it even plays into what I was just talking about with, um, with how we'll take blossoms of different colors and mix and match. So this is all of our Calabricoa in four and a half inch. And we're just keeping it up here to keep it cool uh, in the interim while it's not down on the sales uh, down in the sales area. We just don't have enough room in retail to house all this Calabricoa, so, so all the extra stuff stays up here in the meantime. And we got over 40 different varieties, which is a lot, but what the heck. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really nice flower, and it does really, really well for us. So, um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I just, just wanted to go through a quick run through of some of the things that keep me busy in the fall. You can see planting all that kind of stuff out and uh, what it's looking like here in early summer. And, um, you know, here in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start pulling a lot of these out of here. We're going to open up some big areas and start selling a lot of them off. So before we did that, I just wanted to get a good shot in here, let you take a look, especially looking down on them. Uh, I think you can get a lot more of a concept of what they're going to look like when you're looking down on the plants instead of when they're up in the air. These sometimes are a little bit harder to see. So anyway, those are my hanging baskets. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.